According to the agency, the new strain, known as EG5, is made up of 36% of cases in Canada between July 30th and August 5th and has been circulating in the country since at least May. Experts say there's no evidence the new strain causes severe illness, but it does appear to be more infectious. For the latest on this, we've reached Waywat Dianandan, epidemiologist and associate professor at the University of Ottawa. Hello there. Hello, how are you? I'm doing okay. What, what do we know about the, the spread of the subvariant so far? How well, is it? Yeah. It's uh, it's in North America, it's in Europe, and popping up elsewhere as well. It looks like it'll probably drive uh, the fall wave, which is starting now, pretty much. It looks to be more infectious. That's not surprising. Increasingly, the children of Omicron have some sort of competitive advantage in the marketplace of infection. Um, but all signs so far point to no indication of increased severity, which is important. So but, is is that why, I mean, when we say the World Health Organization hasn't listed it as a variant of concern, it's a variant of interest. I don't yeah. know exactly what the difference is. <laughs> well, the difference is, first of all, the rankings are the worst is a variant of high consequence, the middle is a variant of concern, um, the first is a variant of interest, and below that is a variant being monitored. It was a variant being monitored up until today, and now it's a variant of interest. And the dis distinction is... Um, how much does it compromise our ability to detect, prevent, and treat the disease? So now, you know, it might compromise our ability to treat a little bit, but not seriously. So there's no need to panic. It's just going to drive uh, a lot more cases in the coming weeks. As we head into the fall, though, uh, how concerned are you about the possibility of a new wave of, of COVID cases? The new wave is definitely coming. The question is, will it manifest as an undue impact on our healthcare system, greater hospitalizations, et cetera, et cetera. It looks like hospitalizations are increasing in the USA. I don't think it'll be as bad as previous waves, but it will be something to monitor. What does that mean for everybody else? I think it means we have to do all the regular things. We should probably uh, mask strategically when in crowded indoor set, um, environments. We should definitely seek the new booster vaccine that's coming out in September. And we should probably start using rapid tests more strategically as well. Individually, we're probably at low risk for bad outcomes because the vaccines are so good and because most of us have some kind of hybrid immunity. It's just that we have to protect the vulnerable in society and the fact that a certain proportion who get infected will have a bad outcome. When you say use testing more strategically, what do you mean? Well, right now, almost nobody uses rapid tests anymore. They're sitting on shelves not being used. We have to use them. So if you have symptoms, flu-like, cold-like symptoms, don't just assume it's allergies or, or cold. Test to see if it's COVID. And if you test positive, isolate at home. Uh, try not to make yourself a vector for added infection in the population. Be responsible and do your part to slow down the penetration of this disease in the community. With with this strain, the EG5, are there different symptoms people would expect to see or what symptoms would they expect? Yeah, officially, um, there are no different symptoms from the other grandchildren of Omicron, fevers, aches and pains, etc. But you see some comments on social media from doctors treating this on the front line who are saying that they're not seeing as much of the uh, fevers, as much of the shortness of breath, and as much of the loss of taste and smell which I guess is good, but it could be confusing as well. So if you have just the runny nose and the discomfort, and you might assume it's allergies, well, don't just assume that. It might just be Eris, this new uh, subvariant of Omicron. Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned getting boosters, and the National Advisory Committee on Immunization has said the next round of vaccine boosters will likely be monovalent, meaning they're, they're going to specifically target the Omicron family of sub-lineages. Hopefully I'm getting all that correct. We know that EG5 is an offshoot of, of Omicron. So do you wait for that booster to come out in September or should we be looking to get boosted before then? Everybody's risk calculus will be different. So I think you should seek the advice of your healthcare provider. In general, I say, if you can get the new booster, seek to get the new booster because it's going to be a closer fit to what is circulating. The old booster was great. It was a BA4, BA5 match of Omicron. The new strains are grandchildren of that, uh, of that original strain. Um, it won't be a perfect match, but it'll be good enough. And it might be so good that we barely feel the new uh, wave at all if enough people get vaccinated. So again, that's a wishy-washy way of saying, I don't want to give individual advice, but in general, 
if you are eligible for the new booster, try to get it. I mean, it's it's interesting. Also, you rarely see now someone with mask a mask on. I mean, it's, it's still there are there are some in in public places, but it's it's nothing like what it it used to be. Does a new strain like that emphasize, at least for a time, the the the, the, the need for masks to be considered more widely again? I think definitely in healthcare settings, it should never have gone away. And in more crowded settings, as the weather gets cold, we should consider bringing it back again more strategically. I don't think mask mandates are needed. I don't think the population will accept it. But we should make it more commonplace, especially if you have symptoms and you have to be out, wear a mask to protect other people. If you yourself have been exposed to someone who you suspect of being infected, wear a mask to protect other people. If you're not sure of the status of the people in the place where you're going, wear a mask to protect your family. And if you don't want to wear a mask all the time throughout the year, well then just do so when the, um, the caseload is high in the community, as it will be uh, doing so soon. So again, I don't want to force people or mm. say you must do this, but make good choices. Um, I, I would encourage though healthcare settings to make masking far more common than it is now. Rewatinandan, thanks very much for being with us again. My pleasure, thank you. Rewatinandan, epidemiologist.